Good morning, third graders. It's Mr. Bulby again. We're going to jump back into our astronomy lesson or unit, lesson seven, beginning of our universe. So let's get started. All right. Here are several words for you for your vocabulary. We'll work on those. Big Bang, which is just one of the scientific theories of how the universe began. Compressed data, elements, evidence, expanding phenomena, and theories. What have we already learned? Well, I'm going to read some statements and you're going to think about whether or not they're true or false. If they're false, think about what makes them false and what can make them true. First of all, um, a star is a star. All stars are the same. That would be false. All stars are not the same. There are different ages, colors, temperatures, sizes, and brightness. Reddish stars, like the Betelgeuse, are not as hot as the bluish stars, like the Regal. False. Oh, no, true. <laughs> Sorry. That one's true. Good job. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is irregular in shape. False. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. We cannot see it, unfortunately, from here, but we can see other galaxies similar to it. Our sun is yellow, middle aged, <laughs> medium sized, and medium aged. Which middle aged, medium aged, pretty much the same thing. True. Galaxies are clusters of billions of stars. Also true. Another name for the North Star is Cyrus. Nope, it's Polaris. We call Cyrus the dog star. <laughs> And that one's already there, so we know that the stars contain a lot more mass than planet Earth. That's correct. All right. The universe contains billions of galaxies and extends to vast distances beyond the imagination. We've been talking a lot about the universe these last few days. What exactly is the universe? The universe is everything that exists. All matter, all energy, all space between things. Look around you. At the room you're in, the people around you, even the air you're breathing, it's there, it's kind of hard to see. Think about your school, your neighborhood, your community, your state, your country. Picture the whole earth in your mind. Picture all the oceans, mountains, animals, plants, rocks, and water. All the things that you've ever heard about or seen on earth. All these things are part of the universe. But the universe is much bigger than all these things on earth. The sun, the planets in our solar system that orbit the sun, the huge distance between them are all parts of the universe, too. So are all the other objects in our solar system, all the satellites that orbit the planets, the asteroid belt, the comets, the meteoroids. But the universe is bigger than our solar system. When you look up at the night sky, you sometimes see the moon or a planet that is part of our solar system. You also see beyond our solar system stars, and constellations that are all part of our Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way is huge, and every single part of it is also part of the universe. There are billions of stars in the Milky Way. The Milky Way galaxy is enormous, but the universe is even more astronomical in size than the Milky Way. If the sky is very clear, you know where to look in the night sky. You can see another nearby spiral galaxy. That's right. The Andromeda Galaxy. Like the Milky Way, it is a spiral galaxy, but it may have up to twice as many stars as our Milky Way. Scientists believe there are billions of galaxies, each containing billions of planetary systems. All of them together make up the universe. But the universe doesn't just include the matter or stuff that the stars are made of. The universe also includes all energy, time, space. As you can tell, the universe is big. But it includes things we can see as well as things we can't see. In fact, the universe is so big that we don't even know for sure how big it is. But just because we don't know exactly how big it is doesn't mean we can't study it and learn more about it. Scientists learn more about the universe every day. The new discoveries they make help form ideas or theories about the universe. A theory is an explanation about something or a reason for something. Scientific theories are not just guesses, they are explanations based on evidence 
information scientists get by making observations. Taking measurements frequently, frequently there are several different theories that take on, that seek to explain the same phenomena. So scientists gather new data to help select between these theories. They share the data and study it to look for patterns and answers to their questions. When new evidence is discovered that supports a theory, scientists' belief in that theory is strengthened and it becomes clearer and more certain. When something new is discovered that goes against the theory, the theory can be changed or readjusted to take new evidence into account. Sometimes new evidence can show that the theory is totally wrong. Then a new theory takes its place and explains the evidence better than the old theory. And it's very important for us to remember that the, the Greatest barrier to truth is the assumption you already have it. So be ready to learn, be ready to grow, be ready to take in new information. And if, realize that sometimes theories do change based on evidence, which we're gonna talk about now. One of the largest theories about the creation of the universe or the beginning of the universe. Um, anyways, here we go. Here's an example of a theory that's changed based on evidence. For many, many years, Humans have looked up into the sky and observed the stars. They've developed stories and theories to explain the universe. In a distant past, most humans believed the theory of the Earth was the center of everything that was known. But then in more recent history, around the time that Columbus made his famous voyage from Spain to the New World, scientists like Copernicus and Galileo discovered new evidence that proved this was not true. So a new theory that the Earth was not the center of the universe took its place, which we'll talk about in another lesson. Today, there's a common theory about how the universe first developed called the Big Bang Theory. It's a theory that is well-tested and widely accepted by many scientists, but not by everyone. The Big Bang Theory seeks to explain how the universe may have come to be beginning with a tiny speck. We do know this popular um, theory has been around since the early 1920s. The majority of scientists have accepted it, the basic idea is that billions of years ago, all matter in the universe was in one tiny little spot and it all just kind of exploded. Yeah. Anyway, after the explosion, random chance took over. Molecules came together to form various heavenly bodies. On Earth, non-living molecules came together to form simple life. Through millions of years, the simple life evolved into complex life we have today, which we're going to talk about how that doesn't really work as well. The Big Bang Theory model is based on high-speed computer models, powerful computer models made around the World War II era to help them with their nuclear war stuff. <laughs> the Big Bang is, as it is understood today, is inadequate, since there are many problems mentioned in literature. There are many missing links to the theory. First of all, the missing origin. The Big Bang Theory assumes an original concentration of energy. Where did it come from? Astronomers sometimes talk about a kind of vacuum that everything was sucked into, but the energy source is still needed. There's no real theory as to where this pre-existing matter came from. The missing fuse, what ignited the Big Bang? The mass concentration proposed in this theory would remain forever as a universal black hole. Gravity would prevent it from just suddenly exploding. <laughs> missing star formation. No natural way has been found to explain the formation of planets, stars, and galaxies. An explosion should produce at best an outward spray of gas and radiation. This gas should continue expanding, not form intricate planets and stars and galaxies. Especially not ours, you know, Earth is pretty much just designed for human life. So there you go. Missing antimatter. Some versions of the Big Bang Theory require equal production of matter and antimatter. However, there are only small traces of antimatter in space. So there's a lot of stuff missing that should be there, basically. Even the age of the Earth. I mean, you look at the rivers. Mississippi should have a much larger delta leading into the ocean. The moon itself should have a lot more space dust on it than it does. There's a lot of things to negate this theory. But anyway, missing time. Some experiments indicate that universes may be young on the order of 10,000 years old. If true, then there's not enough sufficient time for the consequences of a Big Bang to unfold. A short time span would not allow for the gradual evolution of Earth, heavens, and mankind. Also missing mass. Many scientists assume the universe will eventually stop expanding and begin to collapse, and then again explode, like 
back and forth. His idea is to avoid an origin and destiny for the universe. For oscillation to occur, the universe must have a certain density of mass. In other words, it doesn't appear to be recycling itself, basically. Firstly, one has to ask how the material of the universe arose in the first place. The first law of thermodynamics, one of Isaac Newton's laws, says that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. A theory has been advanced that given the first bit of matter, the rest would produce itself by self-creation. Does it really make sense? Based on the laws of physics that we have come to believe. Also life. If the universe is evolving, why is Earth the only place that any intelligent life has been located? And then missing neutrinos, that's number eight. Again, there's not enough stuff out there that should be out there to support that theory. So the Big Bang Theory would have been ultimate and destructive incidents. Our universe is ordered by spiral galaxies within our solar system to a degree that is breathtaking. Like I said before, we can tell where the planets are going to be. We can tell where the moon is going to be years from now, just based on observation and calculations from where they've been. Even back in the Egyptians, thousands of years ago, like 4,000 years ago, could tell you there was going to be 365 days based on where the stars were every year. This is nothing new. This has been going on for thousands of years. So the stars and all that stuff have been in the same place for thousands of years. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, I want you to go into your discussion posts and talk about what theories you have about the universe and what you believe. I want to hear what you have to discuss about that. So look forward to hearing your answers. Thank you.